Everybody's heard of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amen? <laughs> How about the good, the bad, and the godly? <laughs> uh. <laughs> the good, the bad, and the godly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Genesis 2, verse 8. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good. And even all, you got to understand that in the physical, he's speaking, what we're seeing here is physical. Amen? But, the physical is backed by spiritual. So the tree of life is the spirit of life. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the spirit of knowledge of good and evil. Amen? Good. Verse 10. Uh, verse, uh, yeah, 10. Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from there, it parted and became four river heads. So in other words, it was symbolically, it's the river of life. Physically, it was the river. Okay? And there was four rivers. Amen? Representation of four gospels. All right. Hallelujah. And the name of the first river is... Fasan, and it is the one which strikes, which skirts the whole land of Hal Halava, where there is gold. Now, and the gold of that land is good. The lemon and oxen stone are there. Now, gold here, you know, you, you got to understand that uh, there's, these are all symbolic, amen? So, it's a representation of the river of life or the anointing, the four rivers, the four gospels. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, representing us also. And uh, Fasan is known as rich and beautiful, gold and Dalaman and onyx. And so each one of these is symbolic. Um, I don't know if you know, but you can go to massage places and they'll, they'll have onyx uh, rocks like stones. And they'll heat them up and put them on your body. So, in other words, they're good for supposedly healing, whatever. Also, my wife loves the on rings and everything, you know. <laughs> and so, all the gold is associated with the furniture, the tabernacle, and the and and the lama, It's associated with the rosin. Um. Now, he said here, and the name of the second river is Kahan. It is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. Now, the word Gahan is representation of gushing, gushing, forceful, strong. And the name of the third river is Hendakel, which is actually the uh, Tigris River. So Hendakel, Hendakel is known as the Tigris River. It is the one which goes toward the east of Assyria, and of course the fourth river is Euphrates. All of these, every one of these four rivers play a vital, important part to life, and especially to the Middle East. They are all symbolic. In fact, we know that um, the Bible tells us that the Euphrates is going to dry up so the militaries of the north can come across, and the Euphrates is drying up right now all over the Euphrates. There are places where you can walk almost across and it's only like a waist level. Hallelujah. And it says here, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. 
For in the day that you eat of it, you shall what? Surely die. So this was absolute prophetic word God gave to be released. He says, man, here you are. If you partake of the spirit of the tree of life, you're going to live. If you partake of the spirit of good and evil, or good and bad, amen, you're going to die. So he, he planned it all out. Everything is pre, predestined. You got to remember something that the Bible says that Jesus came before he was crucified before he was crucified. Amen? I know this. Because he, he, he does the end to the beginning. So he knows what everyone's end is. Now, there's three wills, good, acceptable, and perfect, isn't there? So in our life, there are three options that you and I can end up in. He knows which ones we're going to end up in because he sees the past, our future, from the past already. Amen? So what does he do? He tries to cause us or to get into the place because for many of us, our end was destructive. Every one of us had a destructive life going on. And he intervened. He said, listen, I know your end, and I, I, I don't want that to happen to you, but there's something I, I can't interfere, and that is your free will. So I'm going to do everything I can to cause you to change your will. I can't force you to change your will, but I can cause you to change your will. Does everybody get it? So, and this is where there is the good, the bad, and the godly now. Because the world does not recognize anything else. The world doesn't recognize righteousness. They only can recognize good or bad. They don't even recognize evil. In fact, they try to hide it. So, I mean, they're trying to change all kinds of things now. So there's good, bad, and godly. Now, they may acknowledge godly, but they'll never acknowledge Jesus. See, religion, the word religion means bondage. And why is it bondage? Because religions are created by man. Does everybody get it? Religions are created by man. There's only one way, truth, and life, and that's Jesus. And that's all just about a relationship, not about a religion, because they have all those rules and regulations. Look at, this is going to show that you are godly, and you know, there's a lot of people that have a form of godliness, but are actually wicked. Amen? Even the satanic regime believe that they're godly, but it's the wrong God. Amen? Go to Matthew 7, verse 15. Beware of what? False prophets. Beware of CNN, MSNBC. Uh, what's the other foolish one? The View. All these lying media. YouTube and all the rest of them. Beware of all these artificial intelligence <laughs> lies and so forth. Amen? False prophets, glory, who come to you in sheep's clothing, or, or in other words, they want to come to you in the form of godliness. But inwardly they are wavenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. What's fruits associated with their what? Desires. Their desires. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree or every good spirit, amen, bears good fruit. But a bad tree or spirit bears what? Bears bad fruit. Has bad desires. Now, see, this is where the, right now, they're compromising their fruits or what they call desires. They're trying to alter everything. Everything that's going on, anything that's good, they're trying to call it bad. Or everything that's holy, they're trying to call it wicked. And everything that's wicked, they're trying to call it holy and, right, uh, holy and righteous into their eyes. I mean, look at what's happening. They're confronting, I'm telling you what, you can go on their website. And there are so many, especially in these um, school boards uh, and, and even colleges and so forth, where parents are finally standing up and getting bold and saying, look it, you're putting this book into my kid's class? It's perverse. How dare you? 
And then the, 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 the head of the dude there is trying to say, well, you know, you got to take this up with something. He says, no. And finally, somebody from the committee board that was up there finally stood up for the guy who was trying to bring the truth. He said, he's done nothing wrong. Let him talk the truth. And they took a vote on it. So they had to take a vote on it in the committee board to either let this guy speak or throw him out. Thank God that they voted to let him speak. So they overturned the, the president of the committee board's decision. And he spoke about all this stuff. But again, people are finally standing up. Boldness is coming. Because it's the anointing of God that's drawing people. You know, people are finally sick and tired of being pushed around by demonic bullies, being lied to, deceived, manipulated, killed, <laughs> watching their family members die left and right, dying in the hospital when the hospitals are supposed to be helping them. Doctors and nurses that are turning back, turning their backs on people, all for the cause of money or losing money. Fear. Fear. Verse 18. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree or every spirit that does not bear good fruit is what? Cut down and thrown into the fire. Hello. Every person that doesn't bear good fruit is going to get cut down. Therefore, by their desires or their fruits, you are going to know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So we got to see here that without doing the will of God, nobody will access heaven. Bottom line. So we have the good, the bad, and the godly. This is what the world sees now. That's it. They can barely see godly, but they're calling themselves godly, but they're the ones that are bad, and then they justify good and call them godly. Sounds four. Verse one. Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. How long, O oh, you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is what? Godly. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Oh, yes. Be angry and do not sin. Meditate, focus within your heart on your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. In other words, he has set us apart. Those who are what? Godly. Those who are godly. They're set apart for him. We're his. We're his offspring. <laughs> and this is where the um, identity must be established all the time. Remember, what's the first thing the enemy tries to do is steal your identity. Amen? Circumstances come up, and the devil's always trying to steal it, no matter what. That's his job. We must maintain our identity and increase in knowing who we are. Your identity must reach a level where nothing can harm you, offend you, or cause you to stumble. Amen? 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. Again, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, which we are at right now. In fact, it's pretty incredible, isn't it? Think about what's going on in the world. You know, sometimes it's even hard to comprehend. We're actually living in this time. We're living in the time of the beginning of sorrows, when tribulation is around the corner. But we will see the enemy exposed. We will see them being taken down. We'll see the kingdom of God be established. We will see revivals. But we will see also corruption, 
chaos. We'll see all of these things. Things will be an escalation. But there'll be a battle. There'll be a parallel run of prosperity and a famine. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 2, for men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They will have a form of godliness, but deny its power, because there's only power in Christ. And from such people do what? Turn away. Turn away. In other words, be careful of associations. There's many forms of godliness out there. <laughs> but there's only one true God. There's only one righteous one. There's one Holy Spirit. There's one living word. There's one living water. That's it. One way, truth, and life. That's it. And the enemy will offer multiple ways. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing and hearing preachers that are well known begin to compromise. It's, it's disheartening. They're beginning to compromise certain things because of their fear of losing the amount of people and the amount of wealth. Hebrews 12 and verse 25. Speak it. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, speaking of Jesus, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Now this yet once more indicates the removal, I said the removal of those things that are being shaken as, a th as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. You've been shaken lately? <laughs> Everybody's been shaken. The earth is shaken. Everything is being loosed. Only the things that are solid maintain. Therefore, since we are receiving the kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and what? Godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. In other words, those who have godly fear. That's what separates us. There's the good, the bad. And when he speaks about godly, it's about godly fear. Godly reference. Those are people that respect, honor, and fear the Lord. In Proverbs 8, 13. The fear of the Lord is to what? Hate evil. Ooh. Remember, if you're living and walking in the fear of the Lord, you're going to hate evil. Because you'll be known as one who is godly. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. So we should hate those things. Amen? Proverbs 9.10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is what? Is what? Understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied, and years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. And if you scoff, you will bear it alone. Hello. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What does wisdom do? Tells you what? Tells you what to do. Amen. What does understanding do? Tells you how to do it. Oh, yes. We're on a roll. Proverbs 14, in verse 26. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. 
The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. Proverbs 15, 31. The ear that hears rebukes of life will abide among the wise. He who disdains instruction despises his own soul. But he who heeds rebuke gets understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Proverbs 22, verse 4. By humility and the what? Fear of the Lord are what? Riches and honor and life. Riches, honor, and life. You know, one of the things in the desire is God gives us goals. But there's a goal that's planted in you by the Lord. And, and in these goals, there are daily goals, there's short-term goals, and then there's long-term goals. There's an end goal that you're trying to reach. And it causes us to reach something but the, the word tells us that we must abide by the rules of godliness. And many people are trying to reach these goals in an ungodly way. Manipulate this, that, whatever. But so in this, we've got to reach these goals in a form of godliness so God gets the glory. Amen? So that no man gets the glory. And in every one of these goals, there must be a focus in the area of building God's platforms and pathways to his glory and for his glory. Everything we do. Everything we do, are we building the platform and a pathway for his glory and to his glory? Everything we do. And that's something that we must always maintain in what we're doing, especially decisions and choices. But you have goals. There's, like I said, there's daily goals, there's short-term goals, but there, there's long goals. But they, what good is it if it's done wrong? Cheated. Amen? So what if man gets the glory? We want God to get the glory. Amen? And everything. We're not looking for man to get the glory because then it's not a pathway or a platform for God. And this is what's going to be accounted to us in legacy. Does everybody get it? And legacy. You know, and this is where you, you know, if, if we all died today, if we all went home today, what would be left behind? You know, you, would you be leaving something behind that would be known as godly? Or would you be leaving something behind that's worldly? Good, bad, and godly. Hallelujah. Let's continue on to the swim of Proverbs. Proverbs 23, 17. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but be what? Zealous for the fear of the Lord when you feel like it. I'll day <laughs> for surely there is a hereafter and your hope will not be cut off <laughs> in other words the goal of making it home amen second thessalonians chapter one verse three let's speak it together we are bound to thank god always for you brethren as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. In other words, God's presence, God's love, his character, godliness is, is growing in individuals. So that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of, your, of God for your patience and faith in all of your persecutions and tribulations that you endure which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you, 
and give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he comes in that day to be glorified in, in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That is so powerful that, he, that we may be found worthy. Worthy. 2 Corinthians 7. You know, one of the things about Living a godly life is having things in divine order. Everything should be in divine order. Things that please God. In other words, your priorities in divine order. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation. Not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces what? Death. For observe this very thing that you have sorrow, sorrowed in a godly manner. What diligence it produced in you. What clearing of yourselves. What indignation. What fear. What vehement desire, what zeal, what vindication. In all these, you proved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Therefore, although I wrote to you, I did not do it for the sake of him who had done the wrong, nor for the sake of him who suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear to you. Godly sorrow. You know, that means it's quick repentance. Don't try to justify a mistake. Don't try to compromise it. Amen. And don't try to blame your mistake on somebody else. Accept it. Repent. Put it under blood. And move forward. That's godliness. Philippians 2. And verse 12. Therefore, my brother, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Why? So you may be godly. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in the vain or labored in vain. Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. Wow. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Do not be what? Deceived. Evil company, which means bad. Amen. <laughs> Corrupts what? Good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to their shame. <laughs> Hallelujah. Associations bring impartation. Don't be influenced by the ungodly, the bad, and so-called good. When somebody says to me, uh, 
I'll, I'll ask somebody, hey, how you doing? They'll say, oh, I'm good. I said, that ain't good enough. If you're not blessed, to me, that's, to me, that's not good. Good is not good enough. Oh, I'm having a terrible day. Bummer. You need to say you're blessed. <laughs> See, you got to move yourself out of that atmosphere, out of that position by what you speak. Amen? You may feel like crap. Amen? You may be battling the bug, and there's no, yeah, I'm battling the bug, but praise God, I'm blessed. And does everybody understand that? I have the victory no matter what. Or I kill somebody. Second Corinthians 6. Verse 11. The good, the bad, and the godly. <laughs> and there's a lot of people out there with um, what they would think themselves as good goals, but they're bad. People that are promoting abor abortion think that that's a good thing. They call it, well, a, a woman's got to free, free to, to kill a kid. But it's wrong. It's evil. Amen? And, you know, many people have participated in it one way or another. Well, praise God, if you didn't, you woke up from it, you repented, and you move forward. But don't promote it. Don't justify it. Don't make excuses for it. Blew it. Under the blood, move on. And anything. 2 Corinthians 6, 11, let's speak it. All Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections, emotions, and emotional attachments. Now in return for the same, I speak as to children. You also be open. Do not be unevenly yoked together with what? Unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness or godliness with lawlessness or wickedness or bad? And what communion has light with what? Darkness. And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement? Has the temple of God with idiots, I mean idols. Hello. For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. If you do what? If you come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I'll be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of, self, of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Why? Because the fear of God is a fruit of godliness. Amen? And again, the world doesn't comprehend righteousness. And their godliness is separated from what they comprehend. So when they don't understand you, they'll call you religious. Because to them, religious is godliness. But then they're called terrorist religion and all kinds of other stuff. In fact, now they're trying to call Christians terrorists, you know, because we're exposing the wickedness. So now we're the terrorists. But we're Holy Ghost arsonists. It's real simple. You know, we bring fire wherever we need to. By the presence and the truth of God Almighty. So there is a difference. Remember, the world can only see good, bad, and godly. They don't understand anything else. And they refuse to accept anything else. So we've got to bring it to them. We have to stand bold. Stand strong. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen? Don't compromise. Stand up for what the truth is. 
and be an example by the fruits of your desires and everything that we do so that the world may look at you as godly. They may not understand what's up with you, but the Holy Spirit will have the opportunity to say, that's my child. That's godly. That's godly. That's like me, godly. And, th and then they'll know, you know, what the Bible tells us, that many of them knew that the disciples were with Jesus. Amen? So if you're taking time with the Lord, the world's going to know that you are with the Lord. Why? Because his presence will come on you. And in that, you'll have a form of godliness because you will be godly. It won't be a fake. It will be true. And that wherever you go, the presence of God will leave a conviction. It will leave an impartation. It will leave a, a, an imprint of Christ. Whether it's through word, through presence, through writing, through speaking, whatever it is. Heck, you can write a letter to someone and leave that same impression because the anointing that's on you will go right on those, right on that paper. Amen? So remember, let the world see you as godly. That will open the door for you to, for the platform of Christ. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We're all honored and blessed. We ask that you protect the seed that's been imparted in us. And as we continue to go forward to fulfilling all the goals that you have imparted in us, Lord, we ask that you'll help us to maintain the rules and regulations of the kingdom of Christ in a godly manner so that the world may see you and not us in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give somebody a hug. Come. You got it.